Hey there, welcome back. It's Patrick from Nest Immersion. In this tutorial, we are driving into the advanced feature of Nest Drop Midnight and Pro Edition. Perfect if you're looking to level up your live performance with some seriously powerful tool. I say welcome back, since if you didn't check out the intro tutorial or the complete tutorial for Nest Drop Classic, definitely give that a watch first. It will help you to get to speed before we tackle the extra goodies here. Let's break down the extra feature. Well, with the Midnight Edition, you get access to features like audio device selection, color control, strobe and LFO tool, spout sprite, and MIDI controller support. And if you're working with the Pro Edition, you will unlock even more features like OSC remote control, ACO device support, Ableton Link, and NDI sprite and uh, output. So for, for the deep dive details, please check out the PDF manual. But for now, let's get a quick overview of all its works. This is where you pick which audio input Nest Drop will listen to for visual reactivity. So whether it's a, your webcam microphone, a line-in, or an output interface, just select it here. One thing to note, change only takes effect after you restart the deck. No stress, just close the deck window and it will relaunch automatically. And heads up, if your output device doesn't support audio feedback, you will see an error message. Unfortunately, you, you have to pick another device that does or switch to an input instead. The color section gives you extra control over the final look of your visual. Most sliders here are pretty straightforward, but keep an eye on Lumaki. This one lets you knock out dark and bright area of your visual, making them transparent but it, you won't actually see the result in the video deck itself. You will notice it when you're la layering it on top of another visual. Like in this example, I send the deck one over the deck two with a right click. And the alpha, the alpha slider, super handy for fading visual out or blending layer together. Strobe and LFO. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And yep, you can create that classic strobe flash, but that's just the start. <clears throat> it can actually control any slider automatically. Say you want your visual to fade to black in a sync with the BPM, well, just pick the effect alpha and set the source as BPM, toggle it on, and tweak the rate. The possibility here are pretty endless. A quick note too, you won't actually see the slider moving on their own, even through the effect is happening behind the scene. And the limit slider with it, you can control how strong the effect is. So you can even flip the max and min value to reverse it. You want the strobe to be synced across video deck? Just pick the BPM as the source for all strobe. Sprite. But before talking about spout sprite, sprites are basically image that you can drop into your visual. They can even animate or react to the music. To trigger a sprite, just click on it. But before you do, when you're over, over the button, you will see options like overlay and nested. Overlay add the sprite at the beginning and at the end of the drawing process. While nested, just add it at the beginning only. You want to change the effect? Hold control and scroll your mouse wheel on the button. To use your own image, just toss them into the sprite folder and restart Nest Drop. 
or drag an entire folder into an empty care windows. Now, if you're using a Midnight or Pro, you got access to Spout Sprite. Instead of a static image, it, these use real-time video stream, like another uh, video deck from Nesdrop or a um, live feed from OBS. It's a very powerful tool and it's by far my favorite feature in Nesdrop. It allows you to mix different decks together and makes visual feedback or add awesome effect on live video. And you can of course import your video feed from your favorite VG software like Resolume. Just activate the texture sharing spout output, then play anything you want. And you should see the spot sprite button here. Right click on it to use it on video deck two or left click to use it on deck one. If you want to see a preview how a sprite look like on a preset before going live, just hold the left alt and left shift while clicking on it. This way, this particular sprite will be used as nested in the live preview. You got a MIDI controller, nice. You can use it to trigger presets, control slider, or sync up with your MIDI clock. Just drag your MIDI device into an empty queue from the MIDI tab and start pressing button, key, knob, whatever. You will see them pop up as a MIDI button in this drop. From there, you can link preset, sprite, text button, slider, or even special hotkey by dropping a MIDI button into them. If you are using a MIDI clock, drag it over the BPM label to sync the beat. If you're on Pro, here is what else you get. OSC, Ableton Link, ASIO, and NDI. To control Nest Drop from another device via OSC, just pop into the OSC section under the Deck tab. Set up your IP and port, and click around the UI to see the path and value you will use for each control. For hotkey, there is a dedicated spot in the OSC section. Special tip, stick to preset and sprite in cure only when mapping your OSC. So your OSC path will stay consistent in the future. You can also sync your BPM with Ableton Link. Just check the box and you can either let the network BPM handle things or lead the way with the auto detect from the live preview by checking the other box. And if you need low latency audio or professional audio device, 
ACO is your friend. Just pick your device and select the right input. Change only takes effect after you restart the deck. Just close the deck window and it will relaunch automatically. NDI. Well, NDI is just like Spout, but over a network. It's great for sharing video between computer, but keep in mind it uses more resource and can have some delay. To enable NDI output, check the option in the deck output section. You should find it in, for example, in Resolume into the source in the i server and let's drop deck one then for ndi sprite you can use it as spot sprite but since it could take a few seconds to start a new ndi connection if you want to keep an ndi sprite connection active Turn it on in another deck. Oh, and try to avoid NDI on the same machine unless you really need to. Use Spout instead. And that's the tour. These advanced features give you ton of flexibility to create really dynamic interactive visuals. Whether you're performing live, streaming, or just experimenting, go have some fun with it. And as always, please check the manual if you want to go deeper into any of these tools. Have fun and see you in the next one. Bye bye.